So, <laughs> Ilona is a technical documentation manager and uh, Pravyat is a software engineer at Twitch, the world's leading live streaming platform for gamers. They are going to share the story of revamping the developer documentation website at Twitch. Hi, yes, and this is very much lessons learned because we are still learning lessons as you will see as we go. Hello everyone, my name is Prabjot Singh. I am an API engineer on the Twitch API. And I'm surrounded by people who play the latest video games every day. I'm the kind of guy who still plays games who were, that were written in the 80s and 90s. Um, more about me, I am more comfortable in Golang, uh, being, Twitch being a big Golang fan base, than I am in French. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ilona. I'm the technical documentation manager at Twitch. I'm also a trained chef and I'm a former academic. And I'm really bad at Super Smash Brothers, but I often win games of Killer Queen by riding the snail. <laughs> so when, we, when I knew that it was time to redevelop the website, the first thing I had to do, of course, was needs analysis. And I said this quote at another conference, and it was popular, so I'll say it again. If your API is the product, the documentation is the user interface. So it's very important that you have good doc and you have useful doc. So our main goals were our increased user satisfaction, fewer and shorter calls to support, we want more people using our APIs. We have two different categories of users for the APIs. One are individual game developers or streamers who are building something to make their stream more cool and to get more viewers. And then we also have major companies like Nintendo and Sony and EA that are building, a building Twitch integrations for their games. And these are all API consumers for us. And then, of course, we want more and better mods and extensions. Does, has anybody here used Twitch? Curious. Oh, awesome. Has anybody developed anything for Twitch? Wow, great. I will give you one quick slide on mods and extensions. These, these create ways for viewers and streamers to interact with each other. You can offer special offers to your streamers or to people who buy the game through Twitch. And you can let um, streamers show things off on your game that other people might want. Now, I can actually talk about this for hours, and I literally talked about it for 60 minutes at GDC last winter. So if you want to know more, come find me later. So a 2013 study by Programmable Web interviewed, I forget the number, but it was more than 1,000 developers about what's the most important factors in an API. And complete and accurate documentation was rated number one. So your dev portal is important, and the doc part of your dev portal is really important. We de I decided, we decided that the, our API, doc, API docs need to include authentication, status codes, error messages, sample code, and as well as our terms of use and our change log, because we wanted everything to be available to people in one place. And we wanted everything to be easily searchable. I forgot to add a bullet there. I apologize. So then the next thing we did is we took a look at best practices in competitive analysis. So these were our models for really good developer portals. We looked at the winners of the Dev Portal Awards. You can see that up there. You can go look at their sites. I'll share my slides later. But especially when Aiden API Explorer had best API reference documentation, that was really important to me to look at. And then there's also some usual suspects for best in show API docs. TomTom, Tom, Quali, Genesis, Stripe, Heroku, and Twilio. If anyone in this room works, had anything to do with those, congratulations and thank you. Because <laughs> you gave me good models and you gave me good things to take to my PM and say, we need to work like this, we need to look like this. I'll pause a moment so you can take photos. <laughs> so, we have some real pain points with our current documentation. Um, we're using a very difficult CMS right now. It's really hard for the tech writers to manipulate. It consumes an enormous amount of engineering time fixing its constant breaking. We have a very complicated and difficult interaction with Circle CI. We, one of our DevOps guys thinks he spends 50% of his time on the documentation site, which is ridiculous. Um, 
for some reason I don't understand due to our CMS, you cannot copy and paste the sample code, let alone test it inside the doc. And we have too many different places for feedback. We get it in the developer forums, which is where you expect it. We also get a lot of feedback on Discord and a lot of informal feedback. The developer advocates and I, we go to meetups, we go to conferences, and people tell us what we have to fix in the developer portal. And we can hand them a card and say, will you let me know? And no, we just have to write it down because that's not going to happen. So looking at solutions, I decided that using the open API spec was going to solve our, our problems in a really concise and convenient way. Now, we all know open, open API, but this is why we found it cool. Um, I don't remember who said this quote, but I really liked it. The ability of APIs to describe their own structure is the root of all awesomeness in open API. Sorry. So we all know this, but API is a set of tools that help programmers generate client server or server to code and install self-generated documentation. And so just a reminder again, open API helps you to describe your API, including endpoints and operations, authentication, and then the other stuff we really wanted to include, contact information, license, terms of use, and all that kind of stuff. So from a doc perspective, this is how it meets our needs, and we wanted to switch to design first documentation, and now I'm going to hand off to Prabhjot, who I was very lucky to be assigned as the engineer to work with me. All right, so from our very first conversations with the documentation team, as engineers we realized that besides being an excellent source for a source of truth for our documentation, an open API spec for the Twitch API would bring incentives to developers too. Usually you'd find developers and tech writers work in siloed environments. You build an API, you throw it across, and you hope it's well documented. That was a really big pull for us at Twitch to work together with the docs team and ensure that everything we're pushing to prod today will be accurately documented tomorrow. So since the tedious details of parameter names and parameter types, if a number is being passed as a string or an integer, since all of that is already in one place that we agreed on, we can focus on building the next API as soon as the last one is ready in code. So as, uh, as Aluna mentioned earlier, OpenAPI spec was an excellent source of truth for us and we started to explore what else we could do with, this, uh, with the spec. So we started uh, uh, planning how we were going to build this, and we come up with a five-component plan of how we'll engineer the documentation portal. The first, of course, is the YAML or JSON file that defines the spec. Uh, and then the best part about this as a backend engineer is that I can add annotations or I can use tools like GoSwagger to automatically generate a basic uh, bare-bones spec uh, which Alona and the documentation team can then improve on. The second piece of this uh, was an open source tool called Widgershins. What this does is it takes your open API spec from YAML or JSON and transform it, transforms it to Markdown. This step isn't really important because a lot of uh, website generators on the market will work directly with open API spec. But for uh, familiarity, and because of how well Slate docs work, we chose to work uh, with a converter. So we go from an open API spec, JSON or YAML, to Markdown, which is then fed into the Slate docs website generator. All of this stuff are configuration files, multiple versions of the spec. So it can be a spec for beta, it can be a spec for uh, an in-progress API, or it can be the production live spec. All of these live on GitHub, uh, along with their config. And so what that means is that whenever a, a tech writer is working on a new API, they can pull a GitHub uh, branch just as easily as the devs could and make their changes all, all in one place. Everything else is taken care of by the fifth component, which is Circle CI. And CircleCI works to pull the spec, convert it to Markdown, feed it to Slate Docs, 
generate the website and deploy it. What that means for tech writers is that you can make simple changes in one file, push to Git, and everything else works automatically. And now for some demos. So after we spent some time setting up this pipeline uh, and adding a little bit of Twitch purple everywhere, this is what we get. So everything you're seeing here, uh, everything except the beautiful Twitch purple, comes all from one file. So you will see that the APIs are organized by tags. Uh, they're sorted. It, you don't have to do the manual sorting of APIs, alphabetizing them in the big spec file, and you can rely on a consistent system of organizing your endpoints. So the spec helps us add introductions to the, uh, the API, which means there's enough space for you to actually write friendly content that your developers will consume. There is place for you to add links to our terms of services, our external feedback uh, portals, as well as the change log. And lastly, we've also used the OpenAPI spec to store all of our authentication information. Uh, what you're looking at is a POC, but as we decide to use more and more complex OAuth scopes and OAuth uh, flows, all of those can be written all in one place. Uh, you can set authentication by API or uh, by endpoint specific settings. And as you'll see, each documented API will also come along with sample code on the, uh, on the right side panel, which means that if you spend two minutes getting an authentication token from the Twitch API, and you can copy the curl command from here, paste it into uh, a terminal, and press enter. That's all it takes for your developers to try any new API that's live in prod today. All of the documented APIs also include example sample responses, uh, as well as uh, for good cases where your API worked, or bad requests and error responses, so your developers know what to expect even when your servers are broken, or even when they don't know how to actually consume your API and they're sending bad requests, they will always have expected information to compare stuff with. Lastly, uh, because we are defining authentication requirements for our in endpoints all in one place, every API endpoint, you'll, you'll notice a green bar on the bottom, it's green because it doesn't require any special authentications. Uh, but you could define every endpoint to require scopes, to require special kinds of tokens, and it's all customizable, and it shows up on the UI just as you'd expect it. And if you take a look at the top left corner, you'll also see a search bar. The search bar also works directly with the OpenAPI spec. It, uh, it allows you to search by keywords, allows you to search by um, paragraph content, and everything works just out of the box. One last thing that is not on screen here is trying out the API. Because OpenAPI spec lets you add in live uh, server addresses, you can click a button and try the responses while you're, uh, while you're just looking at the docs right away. So instead of a sample response on the, right, uh, on the right side, you will see live content from the Twitch API. And now, talking about live results, I'm gonna head this back to Alona. Yes, so this is part of the lessons learned. For live results, stay tuned. Because Prabja wrote such a great demo and we showed this to perhaps too high up the food chain, the decision was made Let's revamp the entire developer portal and let's make it match this. <laughs> so everything is still in process and we've gone back to user acceptance meetings with the UX team and everything else. So if you mark down this URL, eventually you will see this online, but to be very honest, right now you won't. <laughs> and speaking of lots of work to do, I'm here to tell you that Twitch is hiring. <laughs> We have openings in pretty much anything you can think of. We even have summer internships, if you know any students, not only in engineering, but also in developer advocacy, technical writing, and solutions architecture. And we do process visas. <laughs> These, are there any questions? I think we have a lot of time.
And should you want to reach us, here is our email. And on, I'm on Discord. You can reach me as Sisena, which is also my Twitch handle. Yes, I have a question. Thanks for the presentation, first of all. And you mentioned that one of the goals was user satisfaction. How do you measure user satisfaction? And like, what parameters do you look at mostly? Mostly, we look at well, a couple of things. One is people telling us. Um, we, ha we actually have a private chat, um, Slack with certain NDA developers. And they are very, very vocal. And people are very vocal on Discord when they like something and when they don't. So we rely on that a lot. And then we also rely on reduced support calls. OK, thank you very much. Are there any more questions? You, uh, hello. Thank you for your presentation. I have a very simple question. You mentioned Swagger, and actually, I, as I know, Swagger can do all you showed. What is, uh, um, I would say, in <clears throat> what open API adds to what Swagger can do? Well, they've actually them. merged. So ah, the they merged. Thing. They're now the same thing. <laughs> with, same. with version 3 open API, it is also Swagger. <laughs> OK, thank you very much. <laughs> and we learned last night, in fact, that um, open API 3.1 is coming out very soon. Yeah, also, um, just to add in, I think I mentioned Go Swagger, which is uh, Golang's equivalent for generating Swagger automatically, if, if that was me. <laughs> Anyone else? Thank you. Um, how big is the team that is running the infrastructure in the entire uh, developer portal? You're looking at us. <laughs> I see two people. Well, no, it's actually grown now that they've turned it into a new project. And we have a technical PM, and we have a PM. And we've just hired a new developer. And also, the UX team is helping us with the research and design of it. OK. OK, thank you. Twitch is actually a smaller company than a lot of people think. We're only 1,600 people. Thank you. <laughs> Any more That's questions? <laughs> Great. Hello, uh, just a question about the tool you use to generate the documentation. Why did you use Slate compared to other tools? From my point of view, it's the one the PM wanted. But why PropJoad approved it, I'll pass. <laughs> so uh, part of the reason uh, Slate was recommended to us was because it uses technologies uh, that our existing developers were familiar with. Uh, but at the same time, we did spend uh, a couple of weeks comparing Slate to Redoc. Uh, and one more alternative I can't think of off the top of my head. But Slate was uh, making very customizable uh, websites. It was easy to change the look and feel. It was also uh, providing us better integration for search. So search, for example, works out of the box, but Slate provides uh, easy integration with Algolio. So we figured that Slate would be a tool that would allow us to expand the scope of what our uh, documentation portal does um, in the future. Yeah, I had before only used Redoc, but I also said I had no objection to learning something new. I was going to be agnostic on that, because there were other things about which I am very much not agnostic. <laughs> Anyone else? Well, thank you so much, Dan. <laughs> thank you all.